Okay, well, in, uh, oh, Christ, in uh, Monty Python style, now for something completely different. This is a video on brewing. Uh, it's a video I've wanted to do for a long time, uh, but for various reasons I've never got round to doing it. One of the reasons is that I uh, don't own a video camera. I used to own one, it broke, so I, I actually had to record it on the video mode of my wife's little... Uh, Casio Exilim camera. So here's the video. There's uh, I think about 35, 36, 37 minutes of, of brewing footage. If you're not interested in brewing, you're probably going to find this very boring. But if you are interested in brewing, you're probably going to find this very boring. But it's a video I wanted to make. Uh, so 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 this is my brewing video, and I hope somebody uh, finds it at least intriguing, if nothing else. Okay, well this is just to show that there is more to me than the usual video type thing that I do. Um, so I'm brewing a bit of beer. Brewing a bit of beer tomorrow. Um, ingredients there. What have we got? There's the hops ready to go. There's the malt ready to go. And if we come over here, up the wobbly wobbly steps. There's the water. I'm going to pre boil it today, get all the hardness out of it, and then uh, carry on tomorrow. So I'll see you tomorrow. See how we get on. Let's have a look at the yeast starter. I don't know whether you can see it very well in that light. Let's take it over here, see if you can see the bubbles coming through if we put it in the light perhaps. Um, Going along very, very nicely. Get it started early, and there'll be plenty of nice active yeast to pitch. There we go. A little bit more of the science of brewing. Okay, we go in. Yes, we are. Okay. Well, soon after I joined YouTube, one thing I wanted to do almost straight away was to make a video on brewing beer. I never got round to it, so here it is now. This is going to be my video on brewing beer. Uh, something that's very close to my heart, something that's a bit different to what I normally do. Okay, well let me show you my setup. Brewing is a mixture of three things. There's a kind of creative side to brewing, there's an engineering side to brewing, and there's a scientific side to brewing. Part of the engineering side is a kind of hydraulic thing. You know, it involves large quantities of water and you need to use the water, it needs to work with you rather than work against you, otherwise you're lifting large quantities of boiling hot water, which isn't a good idea. Um, you have to have ingredients of course, and you want the very best quality ingredients. The main ingredients is this stuff, it's malted barley, this is English two row barley, Maris Otter, it's a low nitrogen barley, which is what you want for brewing, you want low nitrogen. What they do, as you can see from the barley, is that they well, what they do is they lay it out on a, a malting floor and uh, and they damp it, they make it damp and then they heat it up a little bit and it germinates and when it germinates at that point they switch the kiln on and kill it all off and then depending how much you kill it depends on the type of malt. This is pale malt okay which means it's very pale you can get darker and darker malts up until uh, like roasted chocolate malt, so even roasted barley, which is is, is unmalted, uh, and that's to make beers darker and darker all the time. So you've got to have your malt. But what the malt basically consists of is uh, this has been crushed. They crush it, but it's what it's got inside the malt is uh, is starches, effectively, and you can't make beer with starches. So the first process you need to do is to mash it and we'll be mashing it in here. This is a kind of false bottom in there by the way. A copper false bottom. It's got all slits in the bottom and it allows us to pass it out. You might notice this is a sort of thermos cool box that's been converted there. So what you do is you fill that full of water of the right temperature and it needs to be between about 63 and 67 degrees. There's two enzymes that work. One of those enzymes works best at 63 degrees, one of them works best at 67 degrees. The one that works best at 63 degrees converts the starches in there to maltose. Uh, maltose, that's why it's called malt, uh, converts it to maltose and that's what the yeast, which will pitch right at the end of the brewing, that's what the yeast uh, 
converts to alcohol. Uh, but the one that works at 67 degrees converts the long chain starches into a sort of dextrins which are somewhere in between a starch and a sugar. Uh, so what happens then, the yeast, yes the yeast can eat them, it can consume them and it will convert them to alcohol but very slowly. So that adds body to your beer and it adds uh, sweetness to your beer. But that sweetness goes over a period of time. So by by altering the temperature between, if you go more for 63 degrees, we'll get a drier beer, 67 degrees, we'll get a sweeter beer. So that's the first little bit of chemistry that's involved. So at the moment then, we're going to heat that water up. It's heating up there, okay? Better make sure I don't drop the camera in there, and then we can put that in. Once that's done, and we've uh, mashed it, we'll mash it in that water for about an hour and a half. Okay, after we've mashed it for an hour and a half comes the second part of the process and that's where these boys come in, which are the hops. Um, the, the malt we had was uh, Maris Otter, which is one of the finest malts you can get. These are Golden's hops, which are some of the finest hops you can get. And I'll tell you what, they smell absolutely gorgeous. I'll tell you what, if somebody was to poke my eyes out and, and stick rods in my ears so that I was deaf and blind and cut my cock off so I couldn't have sex. If I could at least just still have a nose so that I could smell hops then I, I, life would still be worth carrying on. So the hops are very important. The hops gives the beer bitterness. It also provides a preservative. That's why hops were originally used in beer. The hops will need to go in for about an hour to an hour and a half, something like that. There's also resins, oils in hops that gives beer a, a beautiful aroma uh, and, a, and a, an extra special spicy taste. And what we'll do is, to, those tend to boil off those, those oils, so what we'll do is we'll put some of the hops in right at the last minute so those oils will stay in the beer and that'll give a beautiful tasty beer. So at the moment all I can do is wait for the water to uh, heat up and, and then we'll carry on with the process. Just take this minute to give a quick introduction to some of the uh, rudimentary bits of equipment we're going to be using. One thing you need is a big spoon. A big, you've got to have a big long spoon to get to the bottom of your vessels. Big jugs, everybody likes big jugs. And this is possibly one of the most indispensable bits of kit that I use. Um, glassware, obviously a, a, a jar there. You've got to have a jar to use it with a hydrometer there. Trial, oh, best thing to do is not to drop your hydrometer, your delicate glass hydrometer on the floor. That one seems to have survived that. I always have two of everything, two hydrometers, uh, two uh, thermometers. Thermometer is more important than the hydrometer in actual fact. This is amazing stuff. This is 50% phosphoric acid, 15% uh, dodecyl benzene sulfonic acid, and that is strong, nasty stuff. That little bit there, you add that little bit there to five gallons uh, of water, uh, what's five gallons, I don't know, about 23 litres, something like that, and that'll have a pH, even with just that little bit in it, it'll have a pH of under two, uh, it has a sort of foaming agent in that stuff as well, um, and it allows you to sterilise things very, very quickly with an acid steriliser which doesn't taste of anything. These are kettle elements, the replacement element for my boiler is about 20 quid, these are from a Tesco value kettle which was about four quid, so they're just replacement elements. Okay, right, well, I'm going to test the temperature of the water now and see how we're getting on. We're looking at a temperature of about 73, 74 degrees, which when added to the malt will take the temperature down to about 67 degrees. So I'll get back to you and let you know how I'm getting on. Okay, well, we're nearly at the point where we can uh, start now, nearly at the point where we can add the water. We'll be adding the water effectively to the malt and also to some of this stuff, which is a buffer. And um, this keeps the pH at about 5, well at exactly 5.2, it's a buffer, it's a chemical buffer, not a little bit of chemistry in there. You can do it with adding uh, gypsum and stuff like that to the water, that's traditionally what I've done. But they're not very soluble and it's rather difficult to do and rather difficult to make sure that pH is right. Which makes the, the, the beer mashes better if you've got it at the right temperature. So I use this buffer solution. Now something I just want to touch on is this thing of sterility, anybody who's done any brewing will have been told about sterility. I don't know if you can see but this mashing vessel doesn't look especially sterile. And this is because 
you need to be a little bit intelligent when you think of this business of sterility with brewing because there's parts of the process that need to be very sterile. I have a yeast starter going. Let me show you the yeast starter through the window. Uh, can you see it there? Can you see the yeast starter? Right, that needs to be kept really, really sterile, obviously, um, because that's getting the yeast off to a good start. It would evade the whole point of having a yeast starter if it wasn't kept particularly sterile. And once you've, once you've boiled the hops in with everything, things need to be kept really, really sterile. But this part of the process, before the brew, sterility is not particularly important. Anything that gets in at this point is going to be wiped out when it's boiled, when it's had its boots boiled off for an hour and a half. So that's basically the, 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 that's the rundown on sterility. This point in the process it's not that important. Okay we're going to go for it then. So I'm going to start mixing all this together. I'm not going to be able to film this all the way through. We're going to mix the uh, malt in with the water. We're going to stir it all in and uh, then I'll get back to you and show you what it looks like when it's all put together. Okay, see you in a bit. About halfway through now and you can see what's involved. It's basically a rather crude process of just mixing it all together into a, a real stiff paste and then just hoping that it's the right temperature. If it isn't the right temperature then you've got to add a bit of water. If it's too hot well then you've fucked it really. So uh, anyway I'll keep going and, and see how we get on. Okay, well that's it, it's done, it's mixed in, it's all full. So what we need to know is put the lid on and uh, get the lid here, put the lid out. Uh, yeah, right, get the lid on and then leave it. So that's it, bang, leave that like that, get the thermometer, put the thermometer in the hole and then we leave that for an hour and a half to do its thing. Job done. So let it mash. Let's take a temperature check, give it five minutes, take a temperature check, just check it's just right, and then just let it mash. Stabilised at about 65 degrees, which is perfect. 65, 65 and a half degrees, that's exactly in the mid range of what we're looking for. So that should uh, work really well. So we can just leave that now, just leave it. Okay, well, the situation now is we've been going about an hour. We're uh, boiling up a bit more water. That's going to be our sparging water. Sparging is, is running uh, hot water through the grains to drive the rest of the sugar out of them. So what we'll end up doing is, uh, soon enough, is we'll put this barrel under that tap. We will fit to the boiler tap this bit of piping. And this bit of piping attaches to this device. So what it forms is it's what's called a sparging arm, it's a kind of sprinkler and that sits inside of there and sprinkles the hot water on top of the grains and so that hot water gradually flows through the grains and takes all the sugar out, takes all the sweet sugar out. I opened this up um, not long ago, gave it a bit of a stir, it's beautiful and sweet now so we know that it's going well and those starches are being converted to sugar so it needs about another 10 minutes or something like that and then we can start on the sparging process. Whoopie do. Okay, I don't know if I, I said earlier on about I always keep a spare of everything. Well, it's a good job, look. Look, I've broken one of my thermometers. Fortunately, these are alcohol thermometers. You don't use mercury thermometers. Anything involving food like this very dangerous. Uh, but fortunately, nothing's leaked out. It was the wrong end. So good job I've got a spare, otherwise I'd be shafted. So anyway, we're ready to go now. So the first stage then, get my special jug out, jug goes in there and we switch the tap on. Just let it run out not too quickly. What I like to do is, is to run the first bit into the jug and then I'll transfer that back into the vessel. Remember at the bottom of this vessel there's some copper tubing and the copper tubing has slits running in the bottom of it okay uh, so that the the, the liquor, the, the sweet wort is running through so it doesn't block up, it goes inside the tubing and back out through the tap. We run the first part of it, oh it smells sweet, we run the first part of it into the jug because it's all full of crap, you can see how crappy and, and, and murky it looks. So we run the first part into the jug and then we start using this business here. In fact we can actually set that going now. If we put that on top there, like so, I start the water going. If we look inside, you can see it's spinning round. And that's the sparging process, but we'll have to stop the sparging process in the moment just to put this back in. 
we need to get a reasonable rate but we don't want it coming out too fast it's not supposed to be a, a major fast process so that's basically how the process is going to work and we can just leave that running and I'll uh, come back to you uh, in about 15 minutes okay well as you can maybe tell from the carnage on the floor here and the fact that there's no handle on there we had a bit of a, a bit of a, an accident um, it started when I mentioned the the stuck mash I'd had that time making a wheat beer and uh, I maybe shouldn't have said anything it's a fatal last words because that's exactly what happened here and I tried to resolve it uh, a couple of different ways I don't really know why it got stuck it may have just dropped a couple of degrees too many it tends to thicken up um, so I tried blowing back through it I ended up trying to empty it and when I tried to empty it all out stick it all back in again and then remash it the handle came off and some of it went over the floor only a small amount there's only pretty much what you see on the floor um, I managed to hold the rest of it um, we'll go in again now but I, I can tell you if you can see what that looks like really that should be looking really really clear and it's not it's looking really really cloudy it means it's all full of crap fortunately fortunately when you boil it it removes it, it coagulates the proteins out of the beer and if you look in the boiler you'll see there's a copper tube I'm steaming up I think there um, there's a copper tube in the uh, yes I've steamed up haven't I that's not very clever of me um, let's have a little look that's better there's a copper tube in the bottom of that and uh, the, copper, the copper tube acts the, the hops will sit on top of that and they will act uh, as a filter so it will be clear by the time it's all been boiled we'll drag the proteins out we'll clarify it using the hops so we'll, it's salvageable but it just means it's taking a bit longer than it should do that's all so I'll show you in this trial jar here we're now sparging you can't see the reading but we're at about uh, 1040 something like that so that means that the density of it is about 1.04 uh, that of just water that's what that means that's what the specific gravity is it's how dense that is relative to just water it's denser because it's got sugars in it so it's got it's got maltose in it basically and that's what's increasing its density now the, when we started the sparging operation it started at about 1080 it's now dropped down to about 1040 we'll keep sparging till it gets down to about 1010 um, you have to understand that this is warm this is probably about 70 degrees 75 degrees and that gives it a lower reading as the temperature falls something that's about 1040 you get down down to about 20 degrees and that'll be about 1050 uh, so you have to allow that once you get down to about 1010 though basically you've got all the, the useful sugars you're going to get out of it and what you actually start to do is to pull some of the um some of the wheaty taste down of it and it, it, it doesn't do your beer any good you've gone too far then so that, that's about as far as we'll get it so we'll just keep sparging and probably about another 10 or 15 minutes something like that I thought it might just be worth showing you as well what had gone wrong if you look at the grain bed there I don't if I disturb it you can see the grain is still near the top what had happened was it is as it has stuck it had got too thick the water wasn't permeating through the grain and the level of the grain bed had gone down from about here to about there so effectively the water I was pushing on top was just pushing down on the grain and that was all compact it was compacting there around the the, the the copper filter at the bottom and then the flow was stopping you can see that's not happening now and that's not happening the reason that I've stopped it happening is because when I remixed it put it all back in I then started adding water that was a lot hotter um, rather than adding water at the normal kind of sparging temperature which would be about 75 80 degrees I banged it up to about 90 degrees so we're almost adding boiling water there to raise the temperature it's a bit of a desperate measure but what it's done is it, it's it's made it more porous it's rather than it coagulating being thick it's allowing the water to come through and now we've collected a fair old volume there we're about where we up to up to about there on that vessel so we're collecting a fair volume there uh, so we're not really doing too bad just, a, well, just another little chemistry interlude while things are going along. There are a lot of chemicals involved in brewing and most of the chemicals are involved in cleaning. We've already had the uh, acid uh, sanitizer. Something else that we use is, is an oxidizing sanitizer. This is a little bit like the kind of stuff that people put in their washing uh, to, to make their whites whiter, except this one obviously doesn't have the um, perfumes and stuff like that. That's very good for getting stuff off things. Uh, residues and stuff like that another good thing is bleach but it has to be thin bleach the cheapest shittest thinnest bleach that you can find thick bleach tends to, to often have scents added to it but it also tends to stick to things you can't get it off bleach is very very effective in killing 
uh, microorganisms including the spores, bacterial spores but you can make bleach even more effective and that's if you add acid to it. Now that probably seems a bit dangerous, acid and bleach you shouldn't be mixing the two. Well the important thing is, is that you don't reduce the pH of the bleach too low. You only need a small amount of acid added to your bleach. You need to knock the pH down to about four, four and a half, something like that. If the pH goes any lower than that then it will start giving off chlorine. Um, but if you just reduce, it's called acidified bleach, if you look on uh, the, the internet you'll find stuff about it and it's about 200 times more potent if you acidify your bleach than if you just mix bleach with water. But you need to, you need to do it the right way, uh, you need to add the bleach to the water and, th and then add your little bit of acid to it afterwards. Uh, but that gives you a fantastic, I mean that, that will absolutely wipe anything out. The last chemical we'll look at there is pipeline cleaner this is really really nasty stuff uh, this is uh, sodium hypochlorite sodium hydroxide that's a really really strong alkaline and uh, you need to make sure obviously you wash that out your beer lines in fact when it talks of beer lines I'll just show you while that finishes there this is where I keep my beer in these cylinders there in this little fridge there's my CO2 cylinder there's the regulator and that's where I serve it from. So anytime I fancy a beer, assuming I've got some made, which I haven't at the moment, those cylinders are empty, I just come out here, pull myself a pipe. This should be about done now, so let's see how we're getting on. Let's take our last reading. Now again, look, I just dip things in. Hygiene is really, really not important at this stage. Um, obviously you wouldn't want the cat to crap in it. Um, but other than that, there's not really a lot of problems. What are we down to? We're down to 1,010, so we're done. Okay, we can switch this off. If we taste that, yeah, it's barely sweet. It's just got a, it's, it's got a slight barley taste to it, but there's no sweetness anymore. So what I need to do now is, is transfer all of this back into the boiler up here, which should almost be empty of water. Hardly any water in it, so we'll take the rest of that water out and then we start the boil. We're talking about dangerous chemicals, the other big danger is that you've got very, very large volumes of boiling water and hot fluids. As I say, you have to make the, the height thing work for you, but all this is going to have to be transferred up into that now. So I'll crack on with that and then we can start the boil. Okay, we're just a bit of maths here. We're looking to make about... Um, we're looking to make about 40 litres of beer, which is about the volume we had there at the end, uh, which is about 8 gallons, I think, something like that, maybe just over 8 gallons. Um, the uh, gravity was about 1,045, uh, and the temperature was about 55, 58 degrees, maybe 60 degrees, if I, I don't know. Might not have left the thermometer in quite long enough. So if you allowed for the temperature, you're probably looking at a gravity there about 1,055, which is about what I was aiming for. There's a lot of solids in there, though, and that was probably raising the reading. So probably my efficiency has been a bit low with all these cock-ups that have gone on here, which is a bit of a shame. So I think I'll probably end up with a final gravity of about 1,050. Either that or I adjust my volumes and, and reach my my gravity if I want to do that though I need to reduce my hopping slightly but that's no problem what I'll probably do is I was going to put all the cups in nearly all the cups in uh, right at the start of the boil I'll probably chuck 10% of them in at the end so it won't take the bitterness out of those hops quite so much uh, but we'll get the taste from the hops that's probably how I'll I'll tweak it on this particular occasion you can see the boil is now full and uh, that's really starting to heat up nicely now. We'll get a nice uh, rolling boil probably in about 20 minutes. We'll have to beat the foam back in and then we'll add the hops and uh, then we leave it for about an hour and a half and just let it boil. It's got to really, really boil for an hour and a half. We'll lose some of the volume because of all the boiling. We'll boil some of the, the uh, liquor off, but well, that's no problem. We add the, just add that back as water. Uh, and then we cool it down. We crash cool it with, okay. You crash cool it with one of these. A rather disgusting looking length of copper microbore tubing. What we do to sterilise that because after the boil we really need to start taking sterilisation seriously. It becomes a different kettle of fish altogether. What we'll do is we'll stick that in the boil for the last 15 minutes. That makes sure that that tube is nice and sterile. And that tube we connect up to the garden hose. 
uh, by means of this little adapter that I've fashioned and basically that's just like a cooling coil we pass cold water through there and it will cool down the wort once the wort's cooled we then transfer it into the fermenting vessel and what I transfer it with I use my big jug again and we'll be We'll be putting it in jug after jug, loads and loads of air, loads and loads of froth. You've got to get loads of air into the solution. Um, it's interesting and it's worth bringing this up that one of the things, what you have to do is you have to give your yeast the best chance of working. And the best way to do that is to make the environment as good for the yeast as you can and as bad for everything else. Now, brewer's yeast has evolved over the time it's been used by humans. Um, to be good at, 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 uh, at working aerobically and anaerobically and this is the important thing when you first pitch a yeast you pitch it in an aerobic environment and it's in competition with other because you've got what basically an almost perfect growing medium apart from the acids from the hops it's a perfect growing medium for, for bacteria for wild yeasts for all sorts of spoiling microorganisms so it's in competition with those but it works pretty good in aerobic atmosphere and in an aerobic atmosphere it multiplies quite rapidly but some of these other things might multiply but the point is is that brewer's yeast also aspires anaerobically so even when the oxygen's gone and where these other things then tend to kick off kick out of uh, out of action brewer's yeast can carry on that can carry on working it can carry on doing its job so you're providing an atmosphere that's perfect for the the the, the organisms that you want to fulfill the role that you want them to fulfill so that's the logic behind it so we need to get as much oxygen in as possible once it's cool not while it's hot there's no point getting oxygen in while it's hot because you can't get much oxygen into hot water you've got to get it cool first then we really oxygenate it and then get it going from there anyway uh, talked enough there a bit more of the science though so we'll just leave that going and uh, well I'll, I'll show you how it's going once it's all boiling okay now we're boiling now we are boiling and you can see how this froth is really kicking up now um, so what we need to do is is get up these steps a little bit more without falling off preferably I mean you can fall off that's optional but uh, I know we need to stir the bastard in stir this back in like so paddle it back in doesn't take a lot of paddling back in, we just get it back into solution then we can put the hops in. If you kick this back in first before you put the hops in uh, it's less likely to really kind of kick up because the hops will make it kick up a little bit as well. So you see we've got a proper boil going on there uh, it's going along really nicely and we're just going to leave that boiling, that's going to be boiling now for a good hour and a half something like that so what we need to do now is to put the hops in okay so let's grab the hops again usually do it without falling off uh, is the best bet so let's get the hops tip them in we're going to try and keep back a bit the hops smell beautiful already they'll smell even better once they're in so if we keep back that much keep back some of the hops and uh, we can work those hops in now work them in get them wet and it's at this point where you really feel like you're making beer once you've got hops in there really start to, oh you can smell that now that is absolutely delicious wow that is amazing now it feels like you're making beer now it feels like you're getting somewhere now before you just had sweet work now effectively you know what you're getting on there is beer and uh, you get a really good boil going on there now that, now that protein's back in there it will really start to kick on with a boil. What I'll do is I'll probably take it down to one element. I've got two elements on this boiler. Uh, I'll take it down to one element now. And just let that element do its stuff. No point putting a lid on it. Don't need to. Just let it let it go. It's nice. Got a good roof. Good, decent sized roof in this garage. So, uh, so we've got no problem with the steam. But this is why you can't boil. You can't really brew inside. You know, imagine doing this in your house. Uh, my wife wouldn't really be particularly happy about it, especially if I spilt the fucker uh, all over the kitchen floor. So we'll leave that going for an hour and a half now. I'll probably give you a progress report sometime on the way. Or then again, I might just nip to Subway and buy myself a sandwich. Okay, we're into the last 15 minutes now, so it's time to add, whoa, this stuff, which is called Irish Moss. Um, it's seaweed, I think. 
and what it does is it helps the proteins to coagulate so you can see I've just put the coil in there as well so that coil is going to uh, be doing its thing there it's going to be uh, uh, getting sterilized and then we'll use that coil to cool it down but not yet first thing we need to do is to let that boil for 15 minutes then we'll put the final hops in maybe for about 10 minutes so we'll put them in, in five minutes time and then we'll leave it for about half an hour and that will uh, it's called the cold break and uh, that's the chance for it all to settle out all the stuff to settle out in there so and then we'll start then we'll start uh, decanting it into the uh, vessel uh, the fermenting vessel so the thing we need to do now is to start sterilizing the fermenting vessel uh, and a couple of bits of glassware so I'll get on with that okay so now we've turned it off um, powers off now we're just allowing it to rest there it'll just sit like that for about half an hour or something like that we took the coil out I'll take the coil outside, I'll wash it off under the tap and I'll just leave it in this bin there. This bin here has got the sterilising stuff in it. Now you used to have to fill the entire bin with sterilising fluid, that was what you were supposed to do. But you don't need to with this stuff, as I say it's got a foaming agent and the foam sticks to it. So you just keep running it round the bin, just keep running the bin round. And in half an hour that will be beautiful and sterile in there. I'll give it a wipe down on the outside because the outside will want to be reasonably sterile as well. And uh, then it will be a case of cooling it down, cooling it down as fast as possible, getting the yeast into it and then letting it do its business. You'll see there's a, a tap on the top. What I do is I attach a, uh, attach a bit of pipe to that and then put that into a beer bottle with some water in it and that'll act like an airlock. Uh, so that's how that's going to work. Um, so for now then I'm just going to have to leave this for half an hour, clean that coil off and, uh, and then come back to it. Oh, I'm steamed up again like a bloody, like a noob. Okay, a lot of sanitation's gone on now, this has had a good wiping round. One of the great things about this acid sanitizer that's really altered things is that it means that you can, uh, you don't have to wash things off, you know, it, it doesn't taste of anything and uh, you can just basically rinse things and then just pour it out and, and you don't have to rinse things off. Um, it'll just, yeah, I suppose if you put enough of it in your beer then it'll make it slightly acidic but by the time it's been watered down again by all the beer it's not a problem. So I've wiped this, I've wiped this top down with a brand new fresh cloth um, I've been rinsing all these things out, this has been rinsed out inside now and, and this is the great thing, it's a no rinse sanitizer so that's a big help and it also means that you can wash your hands in it as well, it won't taint your beer and it, it doesn't, it's not too harsh on your hands if you're brewing all the time, if you're brewing two or three times a week then you probably will want to be wearing gloves but uh, but if you're not then it really isn't a problem so we're just leaving the beer at the moment I've dragged it out the garage a bit now um, so if we have a look should be settling down you can see the uh, see the seeds out the hops on there and that's possibly all you can see because now it's gone all foggy again which is a continuing problem um, so yeah I kind of dragged it outside now so you can See what it's like, not a bad day actually, is it? Um, right, okay, so that's the situation. So I need to give it about another 10 minutes, something like that, and then we can put it into the fermenting vessel. Okay, we're about ready to go now, so let's have a look at what we've got. We've got the bucket set up, that's the fermenting bin that's going to go into. I've put a jug in there, what I'll do is I'll run the first runnings into the jug and then transfer that into the top because we're trying to set up a hot filter here, and the first bit obviously will have been below the hot filter, so. That's what we're looking like in there. Run the first bit into that jug and then we'll take it from there. So let's try and line that up there and turn the tap on and uh, away we go. That's it, we're running it up. Yes, we actually hit the jug. That's a good start. We've just about missed the jug. We've just about hit the jug. So I'll run that into the jug and then it just runs all the way through then. From then and you can see there's still a bit of foam laid around. That's from the, uh, that's from the acid uh, sanitizer. That's no problem. Just run the first bit into that jug and then we'll transfer the jug back into the top. And just let the hot filter do its bit. Okay, so now we've got rid of the jug. You can see that it's actually, hope you can see that it's actually quite clear in there. I've put the coil in now. The coil's all ready to go, so we can actually start it cooling down. Let's go do that now. Okay, turn the old tap on. Don't need a big flow. Come back here, let's see how it's going. Beautiful. Okay, so that'll be cooling that as it's running in there. We can actually open the tap quite wide on this. We don't have to be as slow. The hot filter won't 
bed down the way the grains did. This will gradually go down, we'll tip it when it gets to the bottom. So I see in the closing stages now, this is actually unfermented beer. Okay, this is the real stuff. And it smells beautiful, it's smelling lovely and it's looking really, really clear. Let's get the sample jar. Let's get the sample jar. Let's take a sample. Let's see how we're doing. Okay, sample jar. It's the sample jar. This has been sterilised as well. And it's been stood on the sterile top. I'm just going to have to get the sample jar under it. Here we go. Let's give us some idea. Oh, it's hot, it's burning my fingers. This is why you need a glass sample jar. I used to have a plastic one and it used to melt when I did this. See, it's looking quite clear now. All that problem we had earlier on is gone. We're at about 1,040, 1,050 almost. We're almost at 1,050 on there. So that's looking pretty good. As soon as we get a decent volume out, we'll be doing all right. Let's run that back in there. Now, what we do need to do is to get a lot of air in that, but there's no point doing that yet. We'll get the air in a little bit later. Once it's cooled down, like I say, once it's cooled down, and then we'll bang a load of air in, and then uh, we're ready to pitch the yeast. Okay, well the hops bit, that's done its job. I thought that you might want to see what it looks like. Uh, so that's what you're left with at the end. You can see there's the seeds, there's the hops, um, the spent hops. And if we dig through the spent hops here, apart from the fact it'll burn my fingers, there's the boiler element, which takes a bit of a battering. Let's see if I can bend down even more. Um, just let me get the steam off this lens again. If we go down through, can you see the copper at the bottom? That's the same as the copper piping at the other one. And that's got, uh, if I take it off, see it's got slits underneath on the underside, no slits on the overside. So that's, uh, that's what we call a hop, a hop back. It holds the hops back and it allows us to use those hops as a filter. And you can imagine just what a great filter all those hops are. And there you have it, a mixture of, a mixture of hops and, and trub, which is the protein. So we've, we've got all out the solution now. I'll show you what we've got left. I'll show you where we're at. Okay, we're at that. That's the stage we're at. If you agitate this, you tend to get a kind of a thermal regionalization thing going on. You need to keep agitating it to, uh, to cool it down. You'll notice the volume's gone down a bit there. We'll end up topping that up. We'll just top that up with normal water. But what I'll do is, I'm not stupid, I've learnt this the hard way. I move it into position first. It needs to be in the house, it needs to be a bit warmer. I move it into the utility room first, then top it up with water because by Christ, lifting 70 pints of, uh, of water takes some doing, especially when you've got a tap on the vessel and you don't want to smash the fucking thing off. Okay, right, so I'm going to clean this vessel out while that's cooling down. Okay, we're on the home run now. Um, it's cooled down, it's down to a decent temperature. What we need to do now is the bit that, you know, we've done all this sterility um, and now we've got to throw caution to the wind, we've got to get some air in there. There's no two ways about it, so uh, here you go. Look at all that beer. Whoa. Give it one of them. I'll give it a few of these, take it inside, top it up with cold water. Bob your uncle, vanish your aunt, pitch your yeast, and we're away. So I reckon maybe about 8 litres, we'll probably need about 8 litres of cold water in there to make it back up to volume. Put the yeast in and that's it. So uh, there you go. King Heathen's shown you how to drink it. I've shown you how to brew it. Uh, brew it, brew it. All right, look after yourself. Take care. Bye for now.